recommendation. Hi Krishna, we are standing before the Kedarnath Temple, uh, the third stop on our Chardam Parikama. This is a very, very famous temple. It's actually the, the highest elevation of the four doms that we're visiting. It's about 3,800 meters. And despite that altitude, which can cause some uh, altitude sickness, hundreds of thousands of people come here every year. and. Um, Rightfully so, because it's here that one can get the blessings of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is dear to all classes of transcendentalists, including Gaudiya Vaishnavas, particularly in his form as Gopishwar Mahadev. He guards Vrindavan Dham, our most beloved Vrindavan Dham in four corners, is in Shiva Lingams. And he's one of the uh, five personalities who uh, grant entrance into and eternal residence into Vrindavan. So, Kedarnath, um, an arduous journey here for those who walk or even take a car because the roads here are very narrow and very, very, very windy. This temple was actually established by the Pandavas uh, 5,000 years ago. We hear that just after the Battle of Kurukshetra, uh, Maharaj Yudhishthira and his brothers wanted to approach Lord Shiva to become freed from the sin of killing so many soldiers. We can't even imagine how many soldiers were killed. So they're Vaishnavas, they had to do their duty, their dharma as Khatriyas to protect the innocent. Nonetheless, many men were killed and there was a great reaction for that. So they desired to approach Lord Shiva and when they approached Lord Shiva, um, he, he was fearful of taking on the reaction of so many sins like that. So he, he assumed the form of a bull and he ran away. And the five Pandavas, they ran after him all the way here to the Himalayas. And uh, at this point, Bhima caught up with Lord Shiva, who was in the form of a bull, and he grabbed him at this very spot behind me here. He grabbed him. And, um, of course, again, he was in the form of a bull, Lord Shiva, so he went into the earth and only his hump was showing. Actually, his head showed at Muktinath. Muktinath is another holy place, actually, to Nepal. So that hump is taken as the Shiva Lingam. Generally, Shiva Lingams, everyone's seen a Shiva Lingam. It's a narrow cinder like this, but this is in the form of a hump. And Lord Shiva personally manifested that hump. So people who come here, they come to pray to Lord Shiva for, for, um, for, for his mercy. So the Pandavas, to honor Lord Shiva, they uh, built this temple 5,000 years ago. And Adi Shankar, the Acharya of the uh, Mayavadis, the Monas, um, he came here and he actually, at the end of his life, he stayed here. He reconstructed the temple a bit because by that time thousands of years had gone by and become a little deteriorated. So he um, renovated that temple and he passed away here. Adi Shankar passed away here. And his samadhi was just over on, on your left, on my right, a beautiful samadhi of Adi Shankar. But unfortunately in, in the year 2013, there was a tumultuous uh, storm. Actually the storm went on for many weeks actually for months, 
And unfortunately, uh, there was a flood of water that came down from the mountains. Nothing could stop it. And it came down th over the temple and through the town. And unfortunately, thousands and thousands and thousands of people were killed. And more or less, almost every building in Kedarnath was destroyed. This was in 2013. And the Samadhi of Hare Shankar was also destroyed. And right now, no one knows where his um, sacred form is. Um, since then, they've reconstructed the town as best they can. But one might wonder why the temple is still standing. A flood which destroyed, you know, buildings as strong as that. How is it that the temple wasn't destroyed? What happened is during the flood, in the beginning of the flood, a gigantic boulder just came rolling down, rolling down the mountain, rolling down the mountain, and it stopped at the back of the temple. So all the water that was coming down, it was diverted to the sides like this, diverted to the sides. And the um, sacred uh, lingam of Lord Shiva was protected. So why have we come here? We're Gaudiya Vaishnavas. We're not Shiva Bhaktas, but we know that the Bhagavad Purana, the Srimad Bhagavatam, describes that Lord Shiva is the greatest of Vaishnavas. Why is he the greatest of Vaishnavas? Because, well, he's in charge of the mode of ignorance. We know there's three modes of nature, and um, there's a corresponding personality in charge of that. Vishnu is in charge of the mode of goodness, Brahma is in charge of the mode of um, passion, and Lord Shiva is in charge of the mode of ignorance. But dressing like that and being in the form he is, looking like the mode of ignorance, but not in the mode of ignorance, he's Shiva Tattva. So many uh, fallen people are attracted to him, like ghosts and witches and hobgoblins and rakshasas, they're attracted to him. But by his association, they also become Vaishnavas. This is Vaishnava. Bhakti Thakur said one time that the duty of a first-class man is to make a fifth-class man also a first-class man. It's the duty of the Brahmins, actually. Brahmins are meant to elevate people up to the mode of goodness, which is a stepping stone toward uh, transcendence. So these are some of the glories. We could stand here for a thousand years and tell pastimes of Lord Shiva. There's a Shiva Purana, for that matter. But for us, we, take, we adore Him, we love Him, we pray to Him, because He gives shelter to the fallen and he uplifts them to the highest standard of devotion to Krishna. And again, he's protecting the Holy Dhamma of Vrindavan, and only by his mercy, as one of the five personalities who grant residence there, can one enter into Vrindavan and stay there and achieve the most cherished goal of all Gaudiya Vaishnavas, which is Prema Bhakti, or love for the divine couple, Radha and Krishna. So we're making a very quick trip here, because this is very high in the mountains, Actually, this site will be closed in a couple weeks because the, the heavy winter is going to come and with it the snow and they're not able to continue the worship here. The deities will be moved down uh, a little bit lower into the valley. But even now the clouds are coming to fog is here. So again, we came by helicopter. I explained there's some disabilities of the devotees, a lack of time, generous sponsor. Um, we came here, but the helicopter pilot, he landed not far from there. He said, you've got 45 minutes to take that darshan, you must have been waiting to, take, waiting to take for your whole life. You better run up that mountain. And we're at 3,800 meters, you have to catch your breath every two meters, but we made it here by the mercy of our glorious spiritual master, Sridhar Prabhupada. Out of this fathomless mercy, he introduced us to all these transcendental personalities and spoke about these holy places. Actually, here they say that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. That's what the locals say. And there was actually a little shrine to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and some of his artifacts actually, we hear from the local pandits. And um, that was all washed away in the flood. So who knows why the flood came, but the temple remains, the deities remain, and the beautiful lingam and the hump, the hump of the bull, and the, that's the lingam, it remains. And people will continue coming here, I believe, for thousands and thousands and thousands of years to get the mercy of Lord Shiva. Hare Krishna, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Lord Shiva, all glories to all the devotees of the Lord. Hare Krishna.